Hello, my fellow gamers. It's Steve here. I am doing this as a complimentary uh, video to my article on nerdcode.com. This is an article that had been written, it's pretty thorough, about the X Connection adapter for the PlayStation 2 controllers to be utilized on the Xbox console, the original Xbox. This is an adapter that's made by Innovation. It came out around the year 2002 and it's pretty early on in the uh, Xbox's run. And it is, I believe, the first controller adapter for the original Xbox. And what makes it special is that it enables the use of a very unique PlayStation controller on the Xbox game system. This is the Nijikind controller made by Namco, which became uh, available in around 1995. So ultimately, these people in innovation around the year 2002 saw fit to program their adapter to enable this PS1 controller to work on an Xbox. This is a steering controller. It has a twist design. You know, you may have seen it before, maybe you haven't. There's two versions of this controller. There's the white version, which is the one that initially came out in 95 here in the US. And then there's also a, uh, a black version, and I have that here. This one is a little less common. It was only released in Japan a couple of years after this one was released, not in the United States. And it has a couple of unique differences from the, the old style version. Number one is that it's a little bit smaller, as you might be able to tell. Just a slight bit smaller, it's more compact. Number two, the, the uh, area where you grab on the side, the handles, are a little bit thicker and it gives you more substance to hold on to. It actually feels really nice to hold. It's like they, uh, they decided to make it a little more ergonomic. And another nice feature about it is that this old D-pad was real slippery and it's flat and there's no texturing on it. This one actually, I don't know if you see it in the uh, camera there, but this, this has a little more texturing to it. So it's kind of cool. The, these Nijikind controllers have uh, these analog plunger buttons. And you know, if you just press it a little, you give the car a little bit of gas. But if you press it all the way in, you have floored that car's gas pedal and you can go really fast. And then, of course, you got the extra buttons and the shoulder buttons. Uh, they were pretty helpful in games like uh, Wipeout, for which this controller was uh, uh, touted as uh, a very helpful controller. A lot of gamers who played the PlayStation 1 games Wipeout and Wipeout XL uh, enjoyed the Nijikon and became very uh, used to it, and so much that they played all the PlayStation racing games with it. Until, unfortunately, uh, Sony started allowing developers to just make their games that are for racing only DualShock compatible. And they took away compatibility for a number of games for the Nijikon. And then the PlayStation 2 came out and very few games were made available that could be used with the Nijikon. So this pretty much became a controller of the past at that point, unfortunately. So yeah, we may touch on that a little bit more later in the video. Um, I also wanted to show you uh, the Ultra Racer controller made by Performance. And uh, there are two versions of this one one having the spongy wheel, um, the little spongy material. The other one has a really hard rubber uh, material, which is made by Interact. This one is the performance controller, but they, they're both really set up the same way. And then they do, again, have these plunger buttons, which are you know, great for gas and brake. It also has this extra um, uh, trigger, which allows for the same thing. It's, it's, these are button one and button two. And this is also representing button one and button two, if you put it into that mode. This is also programmable, unlike the Nijikon, which isn't. So it does. Ha it also has extra buttons on it. These uh, R1, L1, L1, R2, and L2 buttons, which the Nijikon didn't have. So um, it, again, you can refer to my article, and uh, you'll learn how to use both the Nijikon controller and the Ultra Racer on not only Xbox games using the X Connection adapter by Innovation, but if you combine with the X Connection adapter another special adapter, which I'll show you here in a moment, you can play all the PlayStation 1 games that were not supposed to be utilized with the Nijikon, but only a dual shot controller, but you can now use the Nijikon to play those games. And you can also play the PlayStation 2 games that are racing games with this and, or with this and you can play PlayStation 3 games. So you're thinking to yourself probably, okay, why would I want to play a PlayStation 2 racing game? 
when I, you know, to just buy a steering wheel. Well, number one, steering wheels are pretty cumbersome. They cost extra money. Uh, they are, you know, in a way, you got to have a place to store them, and it's not uh, as efficient for apartment dwellers or people who just don't want to open up closet space. So compact controllers have a lot going for them, especially if they've got plenty of throw. This Nijikon has plenty of throw, just like a steering wheel would. There's plenty of room to move left or right. The Ultra Racer doesn't have as much throw. It's, it's kind of limited in its ability to be moved. Um, there are other controllers in, during the PS1 era that came out that also have limited throw. This one actually has a little bit more than the Ultra Racer. And this is the Top Gear uh, controller, which was made by Logic 3. It also has Jogon, Jogon compatibility. Again, refer to my article if you want to learn more about that. But this one is Nijikon compatible, only a PlayStation 1 controller. It doesn't seem to work on uh, most of the PS2 games from what I understand. Now, this next controller was put out by Mad Cats, and this is called the uh, Racing Wheel. Uh, the Racing Wheel, again, is Nijikon compatible. It's got the short throw um, steering device there and a lot of buttons which are hard to get to when you're playing the game but these are actually pretty easy easy buttons to get to right here I don't know if you're seeing it too well but um, yeah it's a nice controller again PS1 only if you're trying to play PS2 games with it or PS3 using the adapter um, it, it may or may not work I do I will admit to you I blew an adapter trying to plug this into my PS3 uh, four or five years ago um, I don't know if it was a short out but I'm a little frightened of this controller because of the rumble motors in it. I think it requires too much power. But don't mess around with this one with the adapters. And I would probably not use this one either because it's got the uh, rumble motors or at least the force feedback motors in it. With the adapters, you might be risking your, your, uh, your uh, PlayStation controller ports or the adapters or the controllers. Something might go awry. But this has worked fabulously. Every time I've tried plugging it into an adapter, I've hot swapped it, pulled the adapters out of that system, plugged them back in, nothing ever shorts out. Same here with the Nijikon, the black one and the white one, they do fabulously with the adapters. So anyway, getting back to PlayStation 2 games, Automodelista didn't receive very good reviews when it came out. It, it had some quirky control, people kind of, they liked the look of it because it's got this uh, cartoony look to the cars, which, you know, looks kind of interesting. But the game itself had some control issues. So I did try this with the Nijikon controller, and let's, I, I will tell you this, the dead zone's way too big, and the controller doesn't quite get the car going the right direction in a way that you would expect. But from what I hear, this game, if you tune the cars in the game, you know, as you progress through the game, you're given parts, you can tune the cars, certain cars really tune well, and it reduces the dead zone so you can control it left and right a lot more intuitively. So you may want to give this a try and play through it a bit. Automodelista is a unique game. Burnout 3 is another PlayStation 2 game that I've really greatly enjoyed and it feels wonderful when played with the Nijikon. I just wish the Nijikon had rumble in it because that would make this uh, even better. But it is, it is a great game, it controls well, and, and it's, you know, it's basically a dream to play if you're into racing games. Another thing I'll mention here, if you're um, wondering about that second adapter, and it, again, my article really goes over all that information in depthly, so I would just refer you to that. But just real quick here, the X connection plugs in to an adapter that's made for Xbox controllers to work on PlayStation 2. And this is uh, a Mayflash XP Joy Box and I got it from Sewell Direct, and they're readily available online. You can even find them on eBay. Uh, the X Connection, though, mm, good luck finding that one. That's a tough controller to find. And, you know, don't be too discouraged about that because I have something at the very end of our video here that might encourage you a little bit. Even, you know, if you can't find this adapter and use an EGCon, um, there's some hope. All right, now, moving on here, I wanted to touch on some PlayStation 3 games that I think would be great with an EGCon. MotorStorm Pacific Rift, really nice control, fun environments to race around in, lots of cliffs to jump off of, you know, the best arcade racer uh, for, of this generation, if you ask me. And I, you know, I've played a few. 
I also like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, which gets you, you know, racing down the roads, and you got cops chasing you and stuff like that. So it's kind of, kind of original and fun. Another one, uh, Gran Turismo 5. Now this game is unbelievably great with an EGCon controller and you know with the Ultra Racer as well. It it has wonderful control. The cars it feels like you know how you drive a real car. So definitely check out Gran Turismo 5. Now. Getting to the part of encouragement. Okay, this is the Speedster made by Fanatec. It's kind of a huge controller. One great thing about it is if you click this down, it now moves in a way that enables you to. Um, yeah, it's it's not a twisting controller like the Nijikon, but it's it's a it has its own little shifting mechanism or a pendulum action. Okay. And this is a pretty short throw, like the Ultra Racer, not the large throw like the Nijikon. But it does give very good control. Again, using this with Gran Turismo 5, uh, wonderful. Another controller that I think is, is a lots of fun to use is this wheel-shaped controller. Again, a very short throw. It doesn't go too far left, too far right. But it does give analog control that's superior to using, let's say, a dual shock controller with thumbsticks. So it's, it's nice. And another thing, if you're playing the game Wipeout, let's say Wipeout HD on the PlayStation 3, it has these, uh, these buttons on the shoulder of the controller, which would enable for air braking left and right while you're steering. And on the front, you can be pressing up and down for you know, adjusting the pitch of your uh, racing craft. And of course, you can fire your weapons and use shields and all this stuff with these buttons. So there's plenty of buttons that ergonomically fit with your hands. This is called the uh, Pro Racer 2 for the PlayStation 2. And when used with the PlayStation 3 adapter, let's say the uh, Dragon Plus B.2 PS2 to PS3 PC system convert, um, this, this will work on a PlayStation 3. I've also got a couple other um, adapters that will work. By the way, that one is a vibration compatible adapter. If you're looking for it on eBay, just look for the one that has V2 on the edge of it. And you might also want to look for the words vibration function in the uh, sale area. Uh, this is the Pelican. Uh, a lot of people liked this when it came out. It has absolutely, from what I understand, zero lag. And so if you look for a zero lag adapter, this is a good one. And you know, it doesn't have vibration available like the uh, Dragon Plus V.2 but it is a very nice adapter, and um, a lot of people seek that one. There's another one made by Radio Shack. This one's a little older for PlayStation controllers to be used on PCs, and it also allows you to use them on the PlayStation 3. So this is also um, gonna give you no rumble in PlayStation 3 games um, if you're using a traditional PlayStation controller. But it will allow rumble in PlayStation 2 games. All right, so one more thing. All right, now, all right, now going back, backwards a little bit, there are some, um, some of these joy box, these joy box, um, you know, like the X connection, you know, the rear adapter for the use of PlayStation controllers on the Xbox. Well, there's many different brands out there, and none of them that I've tried work with an EGCon, unfortunately. Uh, this is um, Game Elements adapter, nice for regular controllers, even has a steering wheel and regular controller toggle on the side, but Nijikon doesn't work with it. Uh, this is the uh, X Joy Box, a very popular contro uh, controller adapter. Again, not compatible with the Xbox. If you're looking at eBay for one that you might be able to use, you know, I've actually bought a few to see if I could find one that would work. This is the Super Xbox Converter. And this one actually, it looks kind of like an Atari sign. I don't know if you see it there. It looks like an Atari sign imprinted on the adapter. But again, it's not going to work with an EGCon. And just, I want to show you the box in case you saw it on a website or on eBay and wondered, is that compatible? This is the Total Control adapter. And the Total Control, again, not compatible with an EGCon. And that one's identical to the Innovation. This is interesting because, you know, the company that makes the X connection is Innovation. They are the ones that innovated the uh, adapters for the Xbox, so you can use your PlayStation controllers. From what I understand, that adapter, they, they had some legal issues, and the, the one that's rare, they pulled, and then they started producing the connection. It's not called the X connection, it's just called the connection. 
And this one's identical to the other one I just showed you, the total control. So I'm not sure what the deal is. Again, not NijiCon compatible, not going to be able to play your NijiCon with the Xbox using this. So those are the ones I know about. If you, you know, have your own and you, it's not in my little group here and you're wanting to try it, uh, give it a shot. You never know. Maybe your NijiCon kind of will work. Another thing I'll mention, this is mentioned in the article. Got to mention it here too. The Total Control Plus is a Dream, or PlayStation 2 to Dreamcast adapter, which allows the NijiCon to work, and it's very, the buttons are all placed very intuitively. When playing the games, it's even superior to the X Connection button configuration that's allowed there. And so I would, I would say this is a wonder for people who like to play, let's say, PG, uh, not PGR, MSR, and other Dreamcast games that are uh, popular to play. Um, uh, t test Drive Le Mans, eh, it's got kind of a wonky dead zone and you can't adjust it in the menus. It, it could have been better. But, you know, games like uh, Ferrari F355, fantastic with this adapter and a NijiCon. And there's a few others um, that were also very, very good. Another thing I, I wanted to mention to you that I tried this PlayStation to Saturn adapter using the NijiCon's uh, adapters, like the X-Connection connected with the Super XP Joy Box. And I connected them all up together, hoping to get my Saturn games somehow to register in analog mode, you know, like that 3D control pad had an analog toggle on it, you could put it into analog mode. Well, unfortunately, it only registers the NijiCon as a digital controller. So if you twist it a little right, it'll just be a, like a digital on-off signal. So it's, it actually didn't turn out to be as wonderful as I was hoping. But, you know, it, this one's made by Toto Tech. It's really great for allowing regular PlayStation controllers to be used on Saturn if you like that idea. Also, another thing I'll, I keep going on and on, but I have to add one more thing. If you own a, uh, you know, the X Connection and you own the XP Joy Box in the NijiCon and you want to get them all wired up together and hooked up to a, you know, let's say a PlayStation 2 or a PlayStation 3, you want to also have a, an extension cord for a PlayStation 2 to wire in between the controller and the XP Joy Box. And the reason behind this has to do with switching out controllers during, you know, get, when you get into the menus of the games. And again, refer to my article on nerdco.com for an explanation of why that might be necessary. But you'll need to get yourself a PlayStation 2 extension cable if you don't want to get up every single time you want to change uh, configuration and menus. All right. So I will leave it at that. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of gameplay of some of these games so you can uh, see what the NijiCon is capable of. And I hope you, uh, you know, can find more of these adapters. You never know. Maybe they'll be turning up more frequently now that people, the, the word gets out that you can play NijiCon on a PS3. and may make some people uh, uh, start looking for more of these X-Connection adapters. All right. So I hope you have uh, fun racing and enjoy your old classic games on all the old game systems, PlayStation 1, Xbox, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3. All right, take care.